Uh, so today I'm going to be taking care of the last of the exterior projects. So my first project today is dealing with another factory flaw. Um, most trailers where they have seams in the sheet metal, they're going to be joined together, whether it be screws, rivets, or in my case, I think it was VHB tape on that seam and then the one behind this man door here. Those were sealed up great. But for some reason at the front and at the back, they decided to screw the panels together. I'm not really sure why they switched methods. It doesn't look as nice and it's definitely not sealed up as well. I've seen some trailers where they're completely seamless. They don't use screws, so I know it's possible, but maybe it's a cost thing. I'm not sure, but definitely keep that in mind if you're shopping for a trailer. Uh, there's multiple methods and some are sealed up better than others. But either way, I don't think you should be able to see through a wall like this. It seems like they could have just added one more screw at the bottom. I'm not sure what they're thinking here. And I'm not really sure what I'm going to do to fix it yet either. I just knew I had to put something in there to seal it up better. If they used the absolute thinnest little bead of silicone in there regular old clear silicone yeah you can't simply use bath and kitchen silicone to seal a trailer so we can do better so initially I was hoping I could use VHB tape like I assumed they did on the middle seams if you're not familiar with this stuff VHB stands for very high bonding it's basically the stickiest double-sided tape you're gonna find it's actually rated for something like a hundred pounds per square inch that it can hold it's not coming off without a fight so that's basically what makes it waterproof as well so it works great for joining two pieces of sheet metal I suspected they used it on the middle seams because it's just a very uniform gap. Uh, there's no wrinkle in the sheet metal and it looks to be the same thickness as the 3M tape. The problem is you just can't get that tape to the top and bottom corners. It's just something they had to do from the factory and since they didn't, I determined the next best thing would be to use a sealant. But this time we're going to use something a little bit better than your standard bath and kitchen silicone. I really should be sponsored at this point. Anyway, it worked great. I got that seam all sealed up. I screwed everything back together and now I'm confident that's a nice watertight seal. And I did eventually put in an extra screw at the bottom to minimize that big wrinkle at the bottom. Now this front seam wasn't as bad as far as gaps go, but it still wasn't sealed properly in my opinion. So I added sealant here as well. It was a little bit trickier with that rock guard up front. I wasn't able to pull the sheet metal out as far, but I did what I could and I'm confident it sealed better than it was before. So after I sealed up the other side, it's time for the next project, which involves these running lights. Now this might be a little over the top, but I'm not taking any chances. When I'm making this into a camper, I want this as watertight as possible. I've questioned how watertight these lights are. They're not discovery specific lights. I'm sure you can find these lights on just about any trailer. Not 100% confident in how watertight they are. So yeah, maybe unnecessary, maybe overkill, but it only took about 15 minutes. All right, so after that, I decided to take off the factory vents. I know I'm going down a bit of a rabbit hole here, but I noticed they used that same low quality silicone all over the trailer, including the vents. So these factory vents are kind of nice when you have a cargo trailer, just helps with airflow, keeps it maybe a little bit cooler during the summer. But with campers, when you have fans, you have air conditioners, you have screen windows, they're kind of redundant. And honestly, when I'm trying to make as airtight as possible of a camper, the less holes in the trailer, the better. But I think it's more trouble than it's worth to remove it, and I could plug it from the inside easy enough, but I think I actually have a good use for it. I designed for a bench seating area at the back. As I've mentioned before, the driver's side bench is gonna house all of the electrical. The passenger side where that vent is, I think that'd be a great spot for a fridge. Now I'm not gonna build a box for that fridge. In fact, I actually have the wiring going forward of that so that you could put a fridge right there. And that's because I figure if somebody wants to have this space as open as possible, they might not want to put a bench there. If it were me, I would move the fridge to the back where it's vented. As long as you don't need to haul something like four wheelers, you're probably gonna have enough room between the benches. And I would want a fridge in a vented box because when they're running, they actually get pretty warm on the outside. But anyway, I'm just trying to give that future buyer as many options as possible. And that's why I left extra wire to move that fridge back if they want to. So moving on to the other vent, you might remember if you saw my previous episodes, the forward vent I already removed. I replaced that with a Max Air bathroom fan, the dome fan. And that's nice because I took an opening that is basically uncontrolled and I 
installed that bathroom fan and now I can open and close it as I need to. Similar to the fridge, the electrical box on the driver's side with the batteries, the inverter charger, the solar controller, that box, it's gonna get warm, especially when you use the charger inverter. So anything I can do to get that heat out of there, it's gonna only make it easier to condition the rest of the interior space. So speaking of conditioning the air, the next project involves an air conditioner. Now, I like the idea of an upright air conditioner. I like how mobile it is. If you don't need it, you can remove it. If you need to replace one, it's much easier. You don't need to find the exact same size. With a window air conditioner, if you can't find the exact same size, you have to modify that space that it was living in to accept the new one. So I, I like this idea. I know they don't work quite as well, or maybe they're a little bit more expensive, but luckily this is a small space. I'm sure I can find one that's gonna work great. And this style air conditioner, it just simplifies the build so much. The only thing is I have to cut a couple more holes for the vent. These upright air conditioners, they require an intake slash exhaust. Some have one, some have two. I'm gonna do two. Again, I wanna give the future owner more options and try to future proof this thing as much as possible. All right, so this is the access port that I found. I believe it's a six inch hole that you're left with. I like this one because it was black and it has a nice handle to open and close it. A lot of them have just like a couple of dimples basically that you're supposed to be able to grab and they might work, but this just seemed a little bit nicer. Um, it does have a rubber O-ring in there, so it's got a nice waterproof seal. You can find them in many different sizes. I went with kind of a bigger diameter. I, I looked online and found a number of air conditioners and try to see what diameter um, holes that they have or duct. You can find them on eBay, Amazon. They're often marketed for boats, more of like a marine application. So uh, let's cut a couple more holes in the trailer. That's always fun. So at this point, I'm trying to figure out where to best place the ports. Um, most of the time when I see these air conditioners in homes or you see advertisements for them, it looks like the hose comes from the bottom of the air conditioner, then it goes up and it goes out. Now, I don't know if that's because they're assuming you're putting it out a window or if they want that height for any reason. I could have gone straight out the back, I suppose, but I wanted to keep it above the rock guard up front anyway. So I'm basically just going to replicate how it would be installed in a house. Now, I thought about going out the side of the trailer instead of out the front of the trailer, but I'm trying to make that closet about two feet wide. You could make it bigger, and then you'd probably have room to get that duct work on the side of the air conditioner, but I'm trying to make that proposed bathroom that will be to the left of it as big as possible. So anyway, out the front we're going. So after cutting out the holes with my jigsaw, then I filed down the rough edges. Then I did a dry fit, made sure it was positioned how I wanted it. I marked and pre-drilled all the holes. Then I applied butyl tape to the back side of the ports. Then it was time to secure them with stainless screws. Then I always like using a little bit of heat to soften the butyl tape and get it to squish out. It will eventually squish out on its own just from the pressure of the screws, but I like speeding up the process because the next step is applying the sealant and I can't properly do that if the butyl tape is still moving its way out. <clears throat> what a weirdo. Anyway, the next step is taping off the area so that I can apply the sealant without making a mess of things. I thought of using electrical tape since I'm trying to make a circle and it actually worked out really great. Next, I was able to grab my 3M Fast Gear sealant, the 4200 UV variety this time, and I made a bead all the way around. Then after that, I did a little dab on top of each screw for good measure. I smoothed everything out, removed the tape, and I think it turned out great. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. Stick around for the next episode where I get back inside the trailer, finally get to add the insulation, and replace the wall panel. So I'm super excited. So thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.